Mr. Joe Berardi for showing up to our school and talking to us about entrepreneurship. Um, being part of the Alulike program and working at Kuku.org store has got me thinking I could try myself. I have some ideas for products that I would like to sell at Kuku.org. We've been building growing systems such as square foot gardens, warm farms, and aquaponics. I would like to try to sell wheatgrass growing kits and it would be cool to try and grow garden towers. The garden towers would be built in 55 gallon food barrels. So by taking something thought of trash, we could turn it around and use it into something useful. So by selling systems already put together, I would like to help others, my family and friends. On B benefit, it helps others grow their own food, not only helps to save money, but helps everyone become more healthy. It's uh, my pleasure to come here to talk to you today. Um, as an entrepreneur, it's something that I learned as a, as a young boy that I wanted to do something on my own. And I think what you explained to me there by being uh, a member of the club and creating kind of like an aquaponics type of a, a, a venture or a business, you're kind of learning how to do something on your own that you could maybe sell or market to somebody else, right? Okay, that's a definition of an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is someone who thinks outside the box. Someone who doesn't really want to work for somebody else, but actually wants to kind of like chart their own course in life. And it doesn't matter how old you are, you can be really, really super young, and that's kind of part of my story, and I'll, I'll go over that a little bit later with you. You can be middle-aged, you can be old. The cool part about being an entrepreneur is it knows no gender, it knows no age, and it knows no race. That is so cool. There is nothing really else in our society that has no barriers to entry than being an entrepreneur. And that's the kind of exciting thing about what entrepreneurism offers young people today. So, an entrepreneur. The definition of an entrepreneur is someone who really wants to do his own thing, okay? Doesn't have to be super smart, just has to have the desire to be successful. So when I was a little kid, I, and I mean little, I was like three, four years, I was about four years old, because I can, I can remember distinctly. My mom and dad were what we call blue collar workers, and a blue collar worker, my dad was a butcher, a meat cutter, my mom sold Avon. There were six kids in our house, so we didn't have a lot of money. My dad put food on the table, but we didn't have the nice fun things that kids have, the, the newest, coolest thing out there. We usually got hand-me-downs and stuff, and that was okay because we didn't know any better. But what my dad and my mom taught me, which was more valuable than giving me money or fancy stuff, they taught me how to work hard. So, um, and they taught with love. And that's a big that's a big key so when I was about four years old I went with my mom and one time my mom would go and iron clothes for people she'd go to their house she'd bring me along because I'm the, the little one who hadn't you know gotten into school yet and she'd iron their clothes and she'd clean their house and you know there was nothing for me to do because I wasn't much help so I'd go out into the yard and uh, look for stuff to do and so one time I remember I was at this home and I found these glass bottles in the backyard and four years old and being kind of colloquy you know like what did I do I started breaking the bottles you know, what else does a kid do I found rocks I started breaking the bottles and the gentleman one of the gentlemen who was home at the time and you know I'm, I was really fortunate he didn't give me a licking he just went over he said hey Mrs. Berardi your son Joey is he's breaking these bottles you know you should talk to him and tell him that that's not a good thing to do so you know my mom could have given me lickings but you know bless her heart she just sat me down, she said, Joey, those bottles are pop bottles and you can get three pennies for each of those bottles. They're called <coughs> deposit bottles. You can get three pennies for those bottles. Don't break them, let's take them to the store. And so they actually got a couple of them and took them to a store and I saw them give my mom <coughs> three pennies, okay? And so that like, I think if there was a defining moment in my life was when I realized that I could go and collect those bottles and make money from it. And so everywhere I went going forward as a little kid like that, I looked for bottles, you know? 
And every time I'd make my dad stop, he'd go collect bottles, I'd collect them, take them to the store, etc. You know, and so that was my first experience with making money. I was four. Then when I was eight, I got a paper route. And then when I was 10, I started selling cards, door to door, um, kind of like greeting cards. Mm -hmm. Paper routes, mowing people's lawns. I just had this appreciation for if I worked, I could make money. Yeah, nobody gave it to me. I didn't get allowance. My mom didn't you know, pay for all this stuff. I had to pay for it. If I wanted to buy something I liked, I went out and I, I worked for it. So my mom and dad taught me that. And so my backstory or the story of what prompted me to be an entrepreneur was the fact that I saw opportunity that I could go out and work for whatever I wanted to. That's the importance for a young man like you, 16 years old. You've given an opportunity to work in agriculture, you know, doing aquaponics. Mm -hmm. You're looking at things to improve people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. You like that. It's got, a, it's got a good story to it, right? Yes. You're, I mean, you're helping people, right? It's not like you're just going out selling them skateboards or selling them candy or stuff, which is fine. But I mean, you're teaching them what? How to grow stuff, right? Eat healthy. Yeah, eat bingo. See, one of the greatest things in business is if you provide an opportunity for people that is positive, then it makes you feel good and they are willing to work with you, whatever that project is. So what I understand is you've been working at the school. You guys have kind of come up with an idea. Now, as an entrepreneur, um, you can decide what you want to do in life. You can go to high school, you can graduate, you can go out and get a job, okay? Like everybody else. What happens when you get a job? You know what your paycheck is every two weeks. You, you know, you're still gonna work hard. You're gonna work your butt off to be a good employee. But you know every two weeks, that paycheck's gonna come, it's gonna be the same amount of money. Whether you worked hard that week or whether you kinda cruised a little bit, same money. The difference between that and being an entrepreneur is, if I work hard and I don't cruise, but I work my butt off, I can make a lot of money. If I wanna cruise, I'll make a little bit less money. But I'm in control of my own destiny. And I don't have to be a super smart guy to do it. I don't have to be some genius to be an entrepreneur. I found a product and I sold it. So my story goes like this. I work, I work, work, work. I go, I go to high school. I work while I was in high school. I then went to college and I um, was going to school at BYU Hawaii. And I was fortunate to work at Polynesian Culture Center at the same time. For some strange reason, they gave me these great opportunities to work there. I mean, I didn't work just like in the kitchen or giving tours. You know, I'm, I'm you know, a howly guy, so where do they put me? They put me in retail, okay? So I worked in retail, and they gave me the opportunity to be the manager of the cultural retail store there. Now, here I am. I'm in college, a student, and they make me a manager, and I am just like, flabbergasted, like, wow, you're giving me this great opportunity, okay? So, my whole life, I knew I was gonna be successful, all right? I always knew it, I mean, I knew one day I'd be a millionaire. I never knew how I was gonna get there. I didn't know what it was going to, what was gonna happen to get me there, but I knew it was gonna happen. So, what happened was, when I was working at PCC, I realized, hey, I really like retail. I like buying and selling stuff. And the opportunity came for me to, when I graduated, to leave the Polynesian Culture Center and start my own store. And so I had learned all the things about Polynesia, Hawaiiana and the different Polynesian islands, cultural handicrafts, baskets, carvings, tapas, things like that. I learned about that while I was going to PCC and while I was working at PCC. And so we started our own company. And then from our, from our retail, we got into wholesale where Retail is you open a store and you put things in it, you sit in your store and you wait for people to come. And you hope they come. If they come, it's really cool. Retail's great if people are coming. But if people aren't coming, it's like, uh, the worst thing, because no one's here, how am I gonna pay my rent? So, business is good, every, life is good. Business is bad, life is not so good. So, we opened more stores, and we then uh, had an opportunity, Costco came to us, and 
to do what's called a road show. And so a road show is where you bring your products into the Costco stores and you set up for 10 days and people come and buy your stuff. And so long story short, um, we then moved from retail into what's called wholesale. Now the difference between retail and wholesale, the retail guy sits in the store. The wholesale guy sells stuff to the retail guy. So he doesn't sit in the store. He has like a little warehouse and he sells to people, okay? So we got into wholesale and then we started manufacturing products that were interesting to us and to our customers. And then we diversified and we started doing a lot of different business things. And so all of a sudden, our business started to really, really grow to the point that we had like over 20 employees locally. We had a big 16,000 square foot warehouse. We had employees in the Philippines. We have employees in China making all of our merchandise and then sending it to Hawaii for us to sell to people, okay? So that's kind of been my road of leading me to where I am today. I've been in business for about 23 years. The last employee I had, Cal or employer I had, the last guy I worked for was about 23 years ago, the Polynesian Culture Center. The moment I graduated from college, I never had an employer after that. My employer has always been me. I have always done everything on my own. Some things worked, some things didn't. What I found out as on my trek, my pathway to becoming successful, and successful, success really is kind of an individual definition. Success to you or to another fellow may be totally different than from me. My definition of success was having enough money to support my family, having enough free time to be with my family, to travel with them, to go to sporting events, to vacation with them, to work with them, and having a happy family life with enough money so I didn't have to worry about my paycheck or my rent or you know how much money I'm missing because I don't make enough money. Success to me was having all of those things taken care of. Now, you get other guys out there, their version or definition of success may be, oh, fast car, fancy house, a lot of bling bling, you know, this or that. That's success for them. But my term of success was a little bit more balanced, having a good family life and enough money to pay the bills, okay? So, as an entrepreneur, that gives us the opportunity to do so. So as I was, as I was kind of on my pathway to becoming the entrepreneur, one of the key things that I did was talk to successful people. And this is something that you're doing and you are, are helping other students understand this. Extremely key point is if you want to be successful, surround yourself with successful people. And Kelvin, you're 16 years old. I cannot emphasize this enough. You want to be successful someday. You, someday you want to have enough money to take care of yourself and your family, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Who wouldn't, right? It's a good thing. Surround yourself with positive people. People who are going to build you up, not tear you down. You ever been around people who are so like, you know, if they see you, like your friend becomes really successful, they all start talking stink and they don't want him to be successful. You know why they do that? Because they feel bad about themselves. Oh, if they see Kelvin being successful, it's like, man, I should be working hard like Kelvin. So you only want to hang around good friends that build you up and say, hey, Kelvin, let's do this. You know, I know you can be successful. Let me help you. Let me be part of your team. Let's make this happen. Let's be, let's be better than those before us. You know, like I always told myself, you know what? I love my mom and my dad, but they struggled all the time, all the time to pay the bills. And I looked at my mom and dad like, their um, retirement, like where was their retirement gonna come from? And who had the money to give them for retirement? And I was, as a kid, I always thought, I don't wanna be like that. I mean, I love my mom and dad, but I don't wanna be in the financial situation they are, so I will take care of my financial future. Now, the only person who can take care of you is who? Yourself. You, right on, right on. The only one who cares about you is you. Now there's other people who care, but number one is you. So I decided that I was gonna take care of myself. That when I became older, no one had to worry about me. Nobody had to worry about my family. I was gonna take care of it. Entrepreneurship allows me that because it gives me the vehicle to make money, okay? So 
what I would do is I would talk to successful people and I was always looking for that secret formula like what is it that made you successful that I could like bottle up and use for myself. You know, I open that bottle, pour it in, mix a little water, boom, there was success. I'm gonna have instant money. Man, I, that's what I thought is how it worked. And what I realized over time was success is a state of mind. It's a part of your character. It is not some secret formula to go out and make a million dollars. The secret to successful people is their attitude about being positive, working hard, and never, never giving up. Mm -hmm. That's a successful person. You fall down, hey, get right back up. You know how many successful people, you look at the big, big, fancy, gazillionaire guys out there, you know? They, they didn't like, oh, instantly became successful. They worked, they worked, they worked until they got it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at successful people, you will see that I bet a majority of them had as many failures as they had successes. The difference is, if you get knocked down, are you gonna stay down? Or are you gonna get back up? Bingo, right on. So you're catching on to what is it going to take for Kelvin to be successful. So I learned from those guys that I would talk to, successful businessmen. And then I reached the point where I knew they weren't gonna give me some secret to success, like exactly what product to go out and buy or sell or what service to do. I was learning from them and I was picking little bits and pieces of knowledge from them. I was like a sponge, I'm absorbing it. Every chance I got, I'd go talk story with them. Hey, hey, dummy, how did you do this? How did you become successful? I, wa I was learning from them and they would tell me and I would take a little bit of everything they told me and I kind of put it together <coughs> into what became me, what was inside of me that drove me to be successful. Because when you're in business for yourself, you take risks. It's not all easy, and sometimes it's scary because that risk usually involves time and money, okay? So, with that, I took a look at um, different opportunities. And so when we got into our business, we knew it was something that already worked because we saw it at the Polynesian Culture Center, and we knew that if we duplicated it down in Waikiki that it would probably work there too. So we minimized our risk and we started our store, okay? And that led us into our other you know, ventures and product lines that we've done. Um, I think what I've learned the most that has been enjoyable along the way of this 23 years of being in business is being able to give back. I think if you look at really successful people, you see that um, it's not so much as just work, 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 but giving time and resources back to family and friends. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, we, uh, we've been able to give um, jobs to my wife's family. My wife is of, uh, originally from the Philippines. I met her at school here, and so she has family in the, in the mainland, she has family in the Philippines. So they work with us in the Philippines. I have a sister-in-law, she's from China. We work with her family in Shanghai. Um, my children here, I teach them. My daughter is now becoming a sales rep. My sons are, have always been involved in our business. Being in a family business allows you to benefit your family and to give to others, to give to those causes that you like. And most importantly, because everybody who's got money out there, or whatever, can write a check, super easy. I mean, if you got money, writing a check is nothing. The most important thing I think about being an entrepreneur and being successful is giving what's the most valuable thing anybody has. What is the most valuable thing anyone has is time. It doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor you are, you all got the same 24 hours a day. Whether you've got no money in your pocket and he's got tons of dough, you are equal when it comes to time. You both have the same amount of time. Successful people that really kind of get it and understand what life is all about, give their time. So what I like to do is I like to give my time. I like to give back to the community, and I like to talk to students. I like to talk to people who've always wanted to be in business. I love the opportunity to help someone get out of poverty or get out of this vicious cycle. There is a cycle that people get into. My mom and dad worked in the company store. I'm going to work there. My kids are going to work there. There's a cycle of I'm never going to make enough money to really break out and do anything with my life. Being in business for yourself 
allows you to get out of that. It's wonderful. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you come from. Being successful in business is available for everybody. Now, what are some of the life skills and business skills that students can learn? It says uh, to be more successful in business and life. Okay, so this is what when I give a uh, uh, speech on business entrepreneurship like at colleges and stuff this is what I tell guys in college whatever position you have wherever you're working some of these guys are like janitors or working in um, the cafeteria or maybe you're just working in maybe huku.org or some little thing like that I tell them Right now, that's your job. You should be the best employee you could possibly be. You, could, you should be 110% because that builds your character. That is who you become. Now, you can cruise, you can slack off, and you can be a, a bad employee, you know, just because, like, man, why would I want to be a janitor? That's a junk employee. I don't want to be a janitor, or I don't want to be a guy in the cafeteria, or I don't want to be a guy out mowing the lawn. That's no fun, so I'm just going to cruise. I guarantee you that type of character trait will follow over into your own business and that won't be positive. So if today, this moment in time, you are a janitor or a yard guy or a cook or a whatever that job may be, working at a, at a convenience store, you be the best you can be. If you develop those character traits to be the most awesome employee that you can be, I guarantee you that will follow over into your professional life. It's not like all of a sudden the light goes on and I'm gonna be a great entrepreneur because I love this, whereas when I was a janitor at school, man, I hated that, so I was terrible. No, you become the person you are because of how you develop along the way. And so I, when I tell um, young men and women about business and being successful in business is it doesn't happen automatically, it is a progression of you developing into the person that you want to be. And I guarantee you, you look at successful people, they all have those common traits, common traits about them. They're honest, hardworking, positive people who build others up and don't tear them down. And they usually have pretty good family lives. They usually have a pretty good direction with community service. They give back. They don't keep all their money in their own pocket. They give that money out. You know, you give something out, it comes back to you. I really believe that. My wife is a great proponent of that as well. It's one thing we've learned. You do not just keep all your success to yourself. You share it with others. Now, I have lived without money and I've lived with money. And, you know, I'll tell you this. Living with money is a lot better than living without money. And it gives you great opportunities to help others around you, especially yourself and your family. Now, that being said, your business idea. My garden towers. Exactly, your garden towers. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your garden towers. Why, in, just in your own words, tell me, how is that gonna benefit someone? Well, it would make them eat healthier and without growing GMO seeds, you know all GMOs, the genetically modified right. organic, right. Yeah. you could have your own seeds come in from other places except for the GMO seeds and you could grow locally okay. in your backyard. Yeah, and so how's that gonna help you like with grocery bills and stuff? Save, you can save money. So is that important to people? Mm -hmm. So if you could go to a family and say, we can show them two things, right? Now remember, when you're selling a product or a service, you have to show a benefit to to your customer, okay? So, or else they're not gonna buy from you. Oh, well, you're a nice guy, I wanna help you, but really, if you show them a benefit, and the reason they should buy. So what, what do we got? We got two benefits here. Number one, it's gonna save on groceries, right? Uh -huh. And number two, you're gonna eat more healthy. Uh -huh. is, is that a trend where the country's going now? Like everything's green and everything is health conscious, right? Yeah. So are you providing a good? Good. A good example. service and a good example to people? Bingo, okay, so, so now we, we know you've got a good idea. Now, you take that good idea, now what do we gotta do? What's the second thing? Okay, in my mind, hey, I got a good idea. You know, whoever is listening or watching the program that we're talking today, you know, we're talking about entrepreneurship, I guarantee you someone is sitting out there who's got a great idea that they've always wanted to make happen. They just don't know how to make it happen. 
And I tell you, that person who's out there saying like, man, I got this idea is don't give up. Go out and find a mentor. Go and call someone who can help you. Take that idea and develop it and make it happen. Whether it, if it's a good idea, it'll happen. If it's not a good idea, it'll turn into something else. The cool part about it is you're going through a mental exercise. You're either spending your time at the beach or at parties or doing stuff that, that is fun but will never get you anywhere in life. It won't pay your bills unless you become a great surfer or whatever. Or you're developing business ideas that are going to help you and help your family. Okay, so you got a great idea. So now you've got this idea in your head. You're saying, okay, I want to build these um, towers, okay? So you went out and you found a mentor or someone to help you kind of figure out how to do it, right? Okay, and so what did you learn from that? That with the step I took, you could go forward into selling my garden towers. So you kind of like designed it. Did you test it? Test it. We we're going to test it out. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're going to test it because first of all, you got to make sure it works, right? Okay, that it's, it's going to do whatever you say it's going to do, right? And then from a business standpoint, okay, now here comes in the business. You find out all of those things that it takes to make that tower, you're going to cost it out. How much did it cost? Where did I go and buy the materials, okay, to make it, all right? And that's the fun part because that's the homework. So what you do is you go, I don't know, Home Depot or you go anywhere and you, f you actually build your tower, you test it out, and then you get a price for it, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, we figured out, we went to Home Depot, we got all the components for it, wherever we got it from, and that tower cost me $25. Let's just use that as an example. So now we got $25 to put together this tower. Okay, and we got some seedlings, we got the, the dirt inside, whatever, the compost, all of those things that go inside, right? Mm -hmm. That you Plants, the fish. Bingo, plants, fish. You hooked it up to a power source, to water, all that stuff, right? Now, you say, all of that's done, cost me 30 bucks, just an example, all right? Now, if it costs you 30 bucks, all right, and you want to sell it to your family and friends or people down the street, you go out and say, hmm, is there anything similar like this in my neighborhood? Can they go to the store and buy it already? If they can't, then you've got a good idea because you're gonna offer something they can't go and just buy somewhere else. So if it costs you 30 and you can go buy all these components, then let's just say you sell it for $60. I'm just saying that. Now, you could sell it for more, sell it for less, it's up to you. But let's say now you could create this and now you could go out and you can walk down the street or you can advertise or tell your auntie and all your friends. And now all of a sudden you start showing them the benefit of creating their own produce, the health benefits of growing your own thing so it's not uh, any type of modified seeds or any bad stuff, right? Show them how easy it is, how good it is for the environment, how they can save on grocery bills, health, saving money, all those positive things and how you could set it up in their yard for 60 bucks, let's say. Mm -hmm. Then the guy says, yeah, I like that. It's positive, positive, positive. These are all positive things. It doesn't take a lot of space, and I'm actually helping the environment, and I'm gonna be healthier. So let's say you start selling those for 60 bucks, and you, people start hearing about you. Maybe you make a website. Maybe you go out to farm fairs or craft fairs and start showing people. Now all of a sudden, you start getting orders and orders and orders, and you start putting all this stuff together. Can you see how now, all of a sudden, people may growing growing. start growing? Yeah, and then all of a sudden, it's like, whoa. I mean, every time you sell one, maybe you sell for 100 bucks. Maybe you get $70 back for every 30 you put in. See, that's the excitement when I was in business. Extra money coming in. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm selling this thing, whatever it was, and I bought it for 5 bucks, and I just sold it for 10 it's like, I couldn't believe it. It's like, wow, they actually wanted something that I got, you know? And that's the cool part about business. Is all of a sudden, man, if, and I took that money and I grew my business. And then you and I were talking beforehand, you know, we were talking about making, getting money and then spending all your money or spending just a little bit of the money that comes into your pocket. And what did you, what did we say about? Save the rest. Save, save the a little bit. Save a little bit for yourself. And then the, the leftover, where did it go? Back to materials. Bingo. See? 
that's when the light comes on. So the majority of that money went back into making more product, right? Because what happens? We make more than what? We sell more. Exactly, we make more, we sell more, we put a little bit more into our pocket because you gotta live, gotta pay your rent, gotta pay your car bill, gotta pay the utilities and the food and stuff. But now you're taking your money and you are now buying more materials. See, that's the businessman way of thinking. He didn't take all that money he made and just go like, go off on a vacation or buy that fancy truck. That comes later when your business is bringing in so much money that that little bit you pull out of the business you can use for all that stuff. That's the cool part about being in business. It's, uh, it's um, figuring out solutions to problems. It's looking for opportunities. You, um, you're in high school, you're 16, you see opportunities in working with your mentors in high school. They're showing you things to do. The difference of being successful, Kelvin, and being like everybody else is, will you stay the course Will you constantly surround yourself with positive people? And the most important is in your mind. You see yourself as being successful. Don't see yourself as being Kelvin, 16-year-old guy, just doing this. See yourself as Kelvin, the successful businessman someday. That is, will, that is where you will end up if that's where you see yourself. That's the guy in the mirror. That's success. You can do it. I did it. Millions of people have done it. 80% of America is, is driven by small business. 80% of business in America is small business. Mom and pops, guys like me, guys like you. That is what makes our country strong, small business. Not the big corporations, everybody's worried about big corporations, but they're only 20% of everything that America does. 80% is little guys like us. Just collectively, that becomes pretty powerful. Selling to our friends, offering services, and that is the cool part about being in business. And I, I tell you, it's the most rewarding and satisfying thing I have ever done. I'm 52 years old now, and I'm semi-retired. Most guys my age are still out there working, still out there going to work every day. I don't have to do that, because I've done certain things in my life that have allowed me to accumulate enough resources to pay my bills, take care of my family, and be where I am today. Just kind of like take it easy, help people, and do stuff. That's what we want for you. That's what we want for every young man and woman at Kahuku High School or throughout all of the island of Hawaii is to be forward thinking and to see themselves as being successful. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you live or where you come from. It doesn't matter what your mom and dad did or the community you live in or the physical constraints or, or anything. What matters is what's in your heart. Do you want to be successful? Do you want to, to help others out and to, to move forward in life? Then it's up to you to make it happen. Do you think you could do that? I think so. I've met you a couple times, and every time I, I've met you, it's like, you know, that guy, he's got something. You could be spending your time doing something else. I bet you got friends that are cruising at the beach right now. Mm -hmm. You're here, or you're working at kuhuku.org. I guarantee you, five, ten years from now, you're going to be the boss man. You're going to be the guy with his own little business, you know. So I congratulate you for that. Thank you. So my favorite part was when you started to become a businessman at about four years old. And I liked how you told us about how you started at PCC working out and stretched from PCC and you grew into your own. So I'd like to thank Joe Berardi for coming out here today. And I'm Kelvin Simer. Aloha.